As stated in the introduction, uh, in 1982, I was in a tragic mountain climbing accident and uh, suffered frostbite. And my doctors had to amputate both my limbs below, the, below my knee, patella level. So I'm standing before you supported entirely by artificial means. I'm silicone and titanium and composite <laughs> going down. So after my accident, I dreamed of climbing again. The answer is, uh, how might that be possible? And uh, the answer is technology. I developed uh, feet that enabled me to stand on small rock edges the width of a coin. And as you can see in the image, my, my height is augmented. I'm well over two meters in height, able to reach hand and footholds that no one else can reach. <laughs> I developed spike feet uh, here to climb an ice ice wall. And here again, the advantage is my calf muscles never fatigue. I can stand there all day long. And my fellow climbers with intact biological legs will, will fall off. Uh, so from this personal experience, I realized that technology has the capacity to heal, to rehabilitate, but also from time to time to augment human capability. I was able to achieve a, a climbing capacity more advanced after my accident with artificial limbs than I was ever able to achieve before my accident with biological intact limbs. Um, sadly, uh, although technology has served me well, it's, it hasn't served other people with uh, conditions in the world. For example, here you see a, a soldier, US soldier that was hit by a blast near Baghdad. He's missing three limbs and arms and two legs. Uh, this is what current technology can provide. It's not uh, well appreciated, but uh, approximately half the world's population suffers from uh, cognitive, emotional, and physical conditions. And because technology is sometimes non-existent or, or uh, not, not uh, sophisticated enough, uh, most of the people are disabled. So it's a tremendous opportunity in this 21st century, century to advance improved human-machine interactions. Uh, to largely eliminate disability and set the framework for a general uh, augmentation of human beings. And that's the, that's the theme, the focus of an emerging field called biomechatronics, which seeks to blur the boundaries between humans and devices. So I'll give you now a few examples that are happening in this field. In my laboratory at MIT, we're developing the world's first powered ankle foot prosthesis. Uh, here you see me in the morning uh, bolting my robots on. Uh, each robot has uh, three computers in it, so since I'm missing two legs, a total of six computers. Uh, battery power, a modular, if I want to go hiking, I simply take more batteries with me in my backpack. So for the first time in history, the, uh, uh, my, my gait as a prosthetic wearer is completely normal. Even a specialist, a biomechanist, cannot tell that I have two artificial limbs. Uh, the robot, robotic appendages uh, sense that I'm on steps, uh, sense that I'm going down, down a slope and adapt their impedance and, and positions. So although I have a, I have a condition, uh, both of my legs are amputated, but you can't seriously say that I have a disability because of technology. You take the technology away, all I can do is crawl. So we can eliminate disability in this century through better technology. Uh, Sometimes technology can augment. Here's a person with a completely normal intact physiology. He's wearing exoskeletons, and he's able to run uh, more economically. With every, every time the foot strikes the ground, there's all artificial elastic structures that store and release energy and dramatically lower the, the stress through the biological leg. So imagine in the future that you don't go to a bike rack, you go to a, a, a rack of robotic limbs that enabled you to run at unnatural speeds and metabolic rates. Uh, neural interface, what we need in this field is a, is a comprehensive bi-directional peripheral neural interface. There's two components. One is a sensor that goes into muscle to measure the extent to which a muscle has been depolarized. And a second is a way to communicate uh, with nerves. So here's a, a video where the amputee is controlling the robotic limb through muscle action. And then when the limb's in contact with the ground, there's local control algorithms varying uh, the, the stiffness. So it's a blend of intrinsic and extrinsic control. In terms of nerve interface, uh, I did a project in collaboration with InterC Technology, a local company to Boston, where we took a transected nerve and we implanted in the, into the body of this animal skin cells and muscle cells that coax the nerve to sprout, to regenerate, 
to innervate those target end organs. Very quickly, the body of the animal vascularized the tissues, and we ended up with a viable implant. With such implants in the future, amputees will not only be able to walk across a sandy beach, but will actually be able to feel the sand against the prosthetic foot. Uh, central implants, there's exciting work going on. My colleague, John Donahue, uh, developed an implant with his colleagues. So here you see Matthew using the implant. Um, he's checking his email. So what they do is it's a very small implant, a fraction of the size of your, of your thumbnail. And they, they sense uh, neural information that's decoded. And then they use that to control the position of the cursor. So through thought, you see here's, he's tr controlling his television turning it on and changing the channels. Again, this implant is about a quarter of your thumbnail in size. Very, very small. There's a lot of surface area up here. Imagine what can be done. So as we march into this 21st century, we'll have advances in robotics and machine learning, ways of communicating information in, in, into and out to outside of the, the human body via sensors that are on the body and inside the body. And that will set the stage for uh, a notion called uh, telepresence, where there's a, uh, a robot that emulates the human that's, that's remote. And you take uh, sensory information from the human, you, that can go onto the network and then use as control commands of the humanoid robot. And then sensors in the humanoid robot can go across the network and uh, 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 help the human to uh, comprehend the actions of the robot. So such, such ideas, we can imagine the future that our, that our network is not only information flow, but also has arms and legs where you can exert work from rem remote locations. So I'll finish up um, just in, to summarize. In this field of biomechatronics, we see many uh, types of devices that will be in the surrounding of the human, attached to the human intimately, and also implanted in the human that will fundamentally change a uh, human capability physically, cognitively, and emotionally. Uh, thank you. I'll put a period there. Thank you.